The Jewish smear campaign against Ron Paul has begun. With Ron Paul emerging as the front runner in Iowa, Jewish lobby groups such as the Republican Jewish Coalition and Jewish media venues such as the Jewish Telegraphic Agency, known as the JTA, are all in a frenzied panic. Just this past week, the headline article of the JTA read, Jewish conservatives push back to stop Ron Paul. The article reported that in response to Paul's growing grassroots popularity, the Republican Jewish Coalition and other Jewish concerns have launched a counteroffensive. Leading this counteroffensive is Dan Letterman, a Jewish Republican state senator from South Dakota who backs the Zionist touting Gingrich. Letterman told the JTA that Jewry's push to stop Ron Paul includes spreading the word about Paul's past associations with race-baiting rhetoric, warning Iowa voters of Paul's white supremacy thing. What's being gropingly alluded to here are some old newsletters published under Paul's name some 20 years ago that have suddenly resurfaced. According to the Jewish Coalition, these new letters feature hate-mongering language assailing blacks and gays. Here's one of Ron Paul's alleged racist quotes that he supposedly wrote during the L.A. 1992 black riots, now being circulated by CNN's Jewish anchorman, Wolf Blitzer. There's new controversy over old newsletters that is published in the name of Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul. They contain some shocking statements about blacks, gays, other minorities. But how's this for straight talk? June 1992 right after the L.A. riots. In a copy obtained by CNN of the Ron Paul Political Report, one of several newsletters published in his name during the 1980s and 90s, quote, order was only restored in L.A. when it came time for the blacks to pick up their welfare checks. Although Ron Paul denied writing this and other statements as well. How could this happen? Because I've gone through some of these old uh, Ron uh, Paul newsletters uh, and it's got your name bannered on the top. And some of these comments, as we just heard from Brian's piece, are pretty shocking. Yeah, it is. And of course, it's been rehashed a long time. And it's coming up now for political reasons. But everybody knows in my district that I didn't write them and I don't speak like that. The very next day, CNN's Gloria Borger closed in on Ron Paul again. They were called the Ron Paul Report, and did you read them at all when they, were, when they were published during those years? Did you ever sort of take a look at it and say, you know what, this isn't what I stand for? We, we talked about this twice yesterday, has CNN have. Why don't you go back and look at what I said yesterday on CNN, and what I've said for 20-some years. is 22 years ago. I didn't write them. I disavow them. That's it. The Jewish-owned New York Times also jumped all over Paul's race-baiting. The other day in their op-ed, Ron Paul's discredited campaign. No, there's nothing discredited about Ron Paul's campaign, but a shameless Jewish smear campaign led by their propaganda machine. Now this is downright hypocrisy on Jewry's part, and all Jews know it. You see, I grew up as a Jew, and let me assure you that Jewry has no love for blacks or gays. Behind closed doors, the Jews call blacks Schwarzes, and the gays they call Fagelas. Believe me when I tell you that Jews consider it a great shame that if, through some misfortune, they are forced to move to a black neighborhood. And if a Jewish son announces to his Jewish parents that he has a boyfriend, this is the worst thing that could ever happen, since it prevents the Jewish family name from being continued, and the Jewish race from being perpetuated. What really is at stake for Jewry is not Ron Paul's views on blacks or gays dredged up from his past. What is at stake for Jewry is what Ron Paul points out in this following clip on the very day the Republican Jewish Coalition barred him from their recent debate. The Republican Jewish Coalition has decided they're having a forum this evening with all of the presidential candidates except you. Now why would that be? Well, I guess I can't really totally answer that since they made the decision, but it, it does raise some questions because I was disappointed that I couldn't go. I have views, 
but they are different than the other candidates. Why shouldn't a view that is different not be permissible? Why shouldn't it be welcome? Believe it or not, like you mentioned, that there's a better discussion in Israel on, on some of these issues than there is here in America. Uh, because uh, it's sort of dictated by one group. Maybe it's because groups like that won't invite me to their forums to debate some of these issues. Indeed, it is one group in America, the powerful Jewish lobby that dictates what issues are to be aired and what issues are to be swept under the rug. But Ron Paul can't be swept under any carpet like some inconsequential billow of dust. Ron Paul is, in spite of Jewry's attempts to stop him, smear him, attack him, America's last and final hope.